Nothing is quite as refreshing as going for a post-exam ride. Come, Whitcomb. Today we ride for the sake of freedom. Okay. I still don't know if Eusis is going to be the third hangout event we do. Wow, your clothes are covered with dirt. You're even more into this than I realized. It's just dirt. Hardly an issue. It takes a good deal of effort to care for horses. I suppose it's only natural to end up like this. I suppose you're right. I don't know if we're hanging out with you, sis. We've already talked to them. I think we've spoken to pretty much everyone at this point. Um, we for sure decided to do Lara's hangout event. So let's go ahead and find her, do that. General store. Hey, Lara. Hello, Reen. It's rare to see you here by yourself. What's up? I actually found myself rather interested in this store's wares, so I decided to browse for a while. I'm surprised at how enjoyable it's been. Should I join her? Sure. Mind if I join you? Feel free. Maybe this would be a good chance to have you tell me more about the things being sold here. Well, I don't know all that much about them myself. I don't know what makes her think we'd be an expert. Nishi! Hmm. They have a wide variety of items here on display. Most of which I'm unfamiliar with. Which leads to a question I'd like to ask you, Reen. What sort of goods and accessories do girls my age tend to like? Uh, what? I ask because, well... I've noticed that there's a significant difference between myself and other girls here. For example, I went shopping with Monica recently, only to find myself searching for equipment to keep my sword in shape. Meanwhile, Monica was fawning over cute accessories and the like. Doesn't this prove that I'm rather strange? No. Everyone's different, Lara. That's why stores exist. So you can pick what you care about. Well. You're from different class backgrounds, for one thing. That's a difference between you already. But even amongst the noble girls, you are a little bit... different. Just as I thought. But this is of no issue. If there's something I lack, then all I need to do is take the opportunity to learn. Lara's a sword dork. I could introduce her to a shoe dork who's about her age. I assume Estelle's your age. Probably. Now tell me, which of these items here would most likely grab a girl's attention? I mean, I'm not exactly an expert on the subject, but... I mean, what are the options? A crate, mishy, or some... What are those? If those are coffee beans, I'm going for the coffee beans. Mishy is a close second. I have no idea what that what's in that box, though. Green grabbed a cute mascot plush that was sitting on the shelf. How about a Mishy plush? He's a pretty popular character over in Crossbell. Fascinating. He's certainly charming, to say the least. But how about this? Lara grabbed a strap with a blue-haired, muscular man attached to it. This... Is it doggy? Doggy? We'll never know. Character has a rather gallant look to him, doesn't he? I am 100% sure that most girls wouldn't have any interest in him. You never know. What is the, the muscular genre called? Bara? Bara exists for a reason. People love that genre. This is more challenging than I had expected. There are DLC with wearable accessories. I need to relook at those. They might be fun. 
Karine and Lara ended up looking at an assortment of products appealing to Lara's unique tastes. In the end, though, they ended up purchasing the Mishy Flesh. I couldn't be more grateful for your assistance, Reen. If it weren't for you, I never would have purchased something so nice. No problem. Still, my grasp on what other girls my age like remains tenuous. It seems I have a long and harsh path ahead of me if I'm ever to truly know. You know, you don't have to force yourself to be like everyone else because you aren't like everyone else. You are who you are. And that's exactly why we like you. Huh. You've given me a lot to think about today. Let me thank you once again. I'd like for us to go shopping again if you ever have the time. Sure, that'd be fun. Your bond with Lara has strengthened. You don't know what it's a reference to, but you assume it is a reference to something? Fair enough. Reen and Lara reached link level three. We can now do cover, which I don't remember at all, but it sounds like a defensive maneuver. Also, it's probably just because of how her hair is, but she reminds me a lot of Urza from Fairy Tail. And while the, the dogey, doji, doggy strap does not fit this description at all, I just can't help but think it's a strap of the little perfume guy from Fairy Tale. Definitely not a muscular man at all, nor does he have blue hair, but that's what I picture. And that's what I'm going with. Kudos to Mishy. Mishy for the win. All right, so we have the Orval Motorcycle quest to do, and then we have the schoolhouse thing to do. Uh, I said I wanted to speak to the little boy who lives in here. Let's go ahead and do that. Might as well talk to his mother. Okay. We really do owe Klein. He's a very good teacher, so Emil's always happy to have him visit. He's always there to listen to Emil's worries and give him advice, too. We'd be lost without him. Klein will be here to tutor me today. Sunday school's far too easy for me to waste my time with it, so I need a tutor to keep me mentally stimulated. Okay, so it's not that you aged out of Sunday school, it's that you're too smart for it, maybe? Or maybe it's both? Though because I don't attend, all I have to do most days is sit in my room and study. So you and your mom share the same loft bedroom? I would not want to live in this world. Is there like anyone else I need to speak to? We've spoken to pretty much everyone in existence. Trista Home. What is that? Have I ever been in this building? I don't think I have. Also, no bathroom. Good point. That's gonna be a no for me. Kurt loves his sweets. I think that's the one child I spoke to in Sunday school. How about that one? His favorites are berry tarts, so he's always asking you to make some. Berry tarts are delicious. I could go for one right now. How about you try your hand at making one sometime? Man, I want a berry tart. There's a Korean cafe not too far from me that makes really good berry tarts. And now I really, really want one. Same, you have a big sweet tooth. They're so good. All right, horrible bike time. Or, yeah, horrible bike, and then we'll do the other two hangout events, I think. Take me to 
the engineering building. Hello, Angelica. Hey there, Reen. Thanks for stopping by. Might I ask where Elisa and Lara are? Is Emma not good enough for you? Hello? What is wrong with you? Those two lovely flowers would do wonders in brightening up this dreary old building. Let's not make Reen's life even harder than it already is. Sorry, I probably shouldn't think out loud. <laughs> I still haven't talked to Angelica much, but she's definitely an interesting one. That aside, we had a whole study session with her. What are you on about? Your request was for me to assist with testing out the orbital bike, wasn't it? So, what will I be doing? Oh, please. I could hear you making those vroom vroom noises before you even stepped through the door. I was not. But oh, wait, does that mean... Yep. We want you to ride the orbital bike. This is definitely how you should teach someone to ride a motorcycle. Just be like, hey, you're doing it now. Go out on the road. Go do it. Me? I can't deny that that's what I wanted this to be, but I never expected it actually happen. I'll give you all the juicy details when we're actually ready to test. Before we start, however, we want to make sure you have the time. So how about it? Are you ready to ride? As ready as I'll ever be. I think I remember sucking at driving this thing. Okay, let's ride. Good answer. Or maybe I'm still just thinking about the swimming nonsense. First of all, let me tell you a little bit about the bike. Everything you see here is something that Angie asked me to build for her. And because of that, the bike's been fine-tuned to meet her specific needs. You had Korean barbecue when, I was, when you were out for the concert? Korean food is just so good. So good. In a nutshell, it's all Angie. The engine, the brakes, even the handlebar. I see. As you might expect, she and that bike are practically symbiotic. When she's on it, she's a sight to behold. But because we've tuned it specifically to her, it's become a little too tough for anyone else to handle. Think of her as an unruly horse. There's no denying she's a fine bike, but she doesn't play nice with strangers. What did you name her? I demand to know the name of the bike. Right. I'm really hoping I make it through this alive. Don't scare him now, Angie. Crow's ridden it just fine. You let Crow touch this bike? Unexpected. But I suppose he's been working on this bike since we started to. Compared to him, you're a complete beginner. Which is great. You'll have a more objective opinion after you ride. I... Yes, it makes sense why you asked me then. Feeling a little nervous, are we? This is not going to be a you break it, you bought it type situation, hopefully, because I'm broke. I think I have 13K in this game, actually, but that's definitely not enough to cover the cost of an orbital vehicle. Let's head over to the highway. Toa's here. I thought you were in a student council meeting. So, what are Toa and Crow doing here? Angie and George told us you'd be doing this. So, I came along to show some support and take some time off work. My reason isn't quite as sweet as little Toa's here. Like I said before, this bike's at least partially my baby. Think of me as an overprotective father making sure you don't mess up and hurt my girl when you take her out. Thanks. Crow, don't make him any more nervous. Don't worry, Breen. Just ignore everything this guy says. I do, and it's worked great for me. We can rebuild the bike, so stay focused on keeping yourself safe. Right. Thanks. Do you have much experience riding horses? Actually, yeah. You shouldn't have any trouble then. She's a whole different beast, but the basics of riding are the same. 
So have fun. Thanks, Angelica. That helps. I won't let you down. We're so going to die. Okay, then. That should be just about everything you need to know. I think I get it now. The three things you want me to test are starting up the bike, shifting gears, and coming to a stop, correct? That's right. We want to see how you handle everything. Let me give you a few pointers. You might not really get them until you're on the bike proper, though. Hit me. First of all, you can't ride if you can't get moving. So let's talk about how to get started. Starting the engine is simple enough. But how smoothly you ride off will depend on how well you can operate the bike's clutch. Once you shift into first gear, open the throttle, and then slowly and steadily release the clutch. Shift into first gear, open throttle, slowly and steadily release the clutch. Release the clutch slowly and steadily when I start moving. Okay, I'll try not to forget. Next up is switching gears. Before switching gears, make sure to pull in the clutch quickly and firmly. I don't like this. Please drive automatically and don't make me make selections. Does Crow's Crooked Belt annoy anyone else? It does really annoy me. I don't understand how it's still there. I feel like he would take a step forward and it would just fall to the ground with how angled it is. They are. There's two. Once you shift gears, release the clutch slowly and steadily, just like when you start her up. Okay. Shift gears slowly and steadily. I, I can do that. The last thing you need to worry about is stopping the bike, which you probably want to know how to do. Yes, I would like to stop, not to crash. When you want to slow down, release the throttle and apply the brakes to both wheels, front and back. They have separate brakes. You're going to want to give each one different amounts of pressure that I'm so going to die. Apply the brakes strongly to the front wheel and lightly to the back wheel. Okay, that makes sense. That should bring you to a smooth stop. Strongly to the front, lightly to the back. That's a lot to remember. But I think I can do this. I don't. That's the way. This is all about learning through experience and getting used to riding on the fly anyway. So what do you say? Ready to go? You bet. No. Please drive automatically. Right then, first is starting up the engine. Sorry, need a drink. This is pretty intense. It kind of reminds me of how I felt when I first rode a horse. Right, let's push those nerves to the side and get going. Okay, so I pull the clutch level, shift to first gear, and twist the throttle. Now that I've done that, all I need to do is let go of the clutch and I'll be moving. Angelica told me how to do this. What exactly did she say again? Slowly and steadily. Yeah, slow and steady. Now we're talking. This is great. I do not remember the shifting gears thing, though. Crap. There he goes. Can't wait to see the look on his face when he gets back. He's gonna love it. Hopefully. Yeah, hopefully I don't die along the way. Wow, this feels amazing. I'm amazed at just how stable and smooth the ride is too, considering how heavy it is. What if I just didn't go back to town? What if I just left? I think I'm used to the speed now. Let's try switching gears. No, I don't, rem I don't remember the switching gears thing. Right, first I need to roll off the throttle. Then I need to pull in the clutch, change gears, then release it. Angelica told me I had to handle the clutch a specific way during all of this. What was it again?
Oh. No. I don't remember. I'm gonna say this one. This is probably wrong. I don't remember this bit of dialogue. Alright. I need to pull in the clutch quickly and firmly, then change gears. And after that, I need to release the clutch slowly but steadily. Never mind, I was right. I'm so good at this. There we go. Perfect. I didn't think it was quick and quick or slow and slow. And the middle was the only one that had one of each. That was my logic, I guess. Going this fast really does feel great. I get why Angelica loves this so much. Well, the fun's gotta come to an end eventually. It's probably about time to stop. Obviously, I need to hit the brakes, but how much pressure do I put on them? It was heavy in the front, light in the back. I remember that one. Hmm, pretty sure Angelica said strong on the front brakes, light on the rear brakes. I stopped almost exactly where I expected to, so I guess I did it right. This thing's incredible, though. It feels like I'm still riding along, even though I've come to a stop. But I guess I've got to snap out of it eventually. The others are waiting for me. Better head back now. So I can't answer quest, uh, quest, test questions to save my life, but I can ride a motorcycle. Look at me go. Welcome back, Reed. Well, how was it? I'm, I'm amazed to say the least. The sheer speed, the engine's vibration, and the feeling of the wind as you ride along. You've been hanging out with guys too much. I've never experienced anything like it. No amount of horse riding could have ever prepared me for this. Just, wow. Guess you've got some potential. Look at this guy. He's trying to act all calm and composed, but his face is just screaming, let me go back out and ride. Plain as day. Seems like you handled it really well too, based on your report. I have to admit, I didn't expect those kinds of results out of you. You thought I would fail? Thanks, George. Thanks. Realistic expectations, but thanks. It's a pretty unwieldy machine. It's even more impressive considering it was his first ride with her, too. Nice to know that I could have a worthy rival waiting in the wings. Not everyone can get that much praise out of Angie. You should pat yourself on the back. It's a real honor. Now we need to hear some more detailed impressions of each phase, but let's do that back in the engineering building. Good plan. Aw, they're having so much fun with this. Maybe too much. Ah, thank God we don't have to hear car noises anymore. That was hurting my eardrums. Reen is riding a motor vehicle for what is essentially the first time ever, but correctly gauged exactly how far it would take him to stop after braking correctly. Press X to doubt. Yeah. I... Baffling. If only driving were that easy to learn in real life. It's not like every car has its own special braking nonsense. Thanks, Reen. The info you gave me should come in handy. Glad I could help. I think she'll be a much more stable ride from now on. I'll have to be sure to tell Elisa's mother about everything we learned today, if they end up mass producing orbital bikes. Elisa's mother is the chairman of the Reinford Group, isn't she? I didn't know you were familiar with each other. The Rogner and Reinford families share a good relationship, actually. Oh yeah, they're both big names in war, right? Yep. Angie's dad's one of the group's biggest shareholders, too. Wow, they are pretty close. Well, now you know. Elisa's mother provided the engine and a number of other parts for the bike, too. So that's how you got your hands on everything. That's right. 
Although whether or not Reinford will actually mass produce the bike is an entirely different matter. Their biggest goal is to turn a profit, so the only way it's happening is if we can show them that it would make money. Which is why we're currently trying to make it into something that the masses can handle. And today, you were a big help in getting closer to that goal. Wow. I'd love to see that happen. Looks like you get it. I guess my first impressions of you were right on the mark. Oh, I haven't properly thanked you yet, have I? Thank you for helping us today. Here's a little token of my thanks. Dragon Bane. Interesting. Are you sure about this? It seems like a really valuable quartz. Sounds like a fancy version of Septium Bane. Of course. I'm sure you'll be able to put it to good use. Well then, Reen, thanks a lot for your help today. I'd like it if you could help us out next time we need a hand, too. You expected me to be able to remember motorcycle nonsense a second time? Ha! No. I'll cancel my plans as soon as you ask. Born to be Orville, 